Okay, good evening. We are going to tell you our experience from our life. I am not a professor. Even I, I continue or I complete my high school in jail. So it's, it's real experience. My name is Bassam Aramin. I'm 41 years. I'm married. I have six children. I live in East Jerusalem. I found myself part of this circle of violence in my country. I grew up under the occupation, Israeli occupation. I understand that I have no choice just to fight, to resist the occupation. Normal people will never accept the occupation, any occupation. I found myself seven years in the Israeli jails when I was 17. In jail, I start to understand why I am in jail. Who is our occupiers? And why they occupy us? What's their history? And from where they come? Very briefly, I saw a movie talking about the Holocaust, the Jewish Holocaust in Europe. At the beginning, I want to enjoy to see my enemy suffering and dying and torture. Then I found myself crying. Get sympathy with this, with this enemy with those innocent people who are going to die waiting for the bullet just because they are Jews. In the same time, our main message that if we, the fighters, the instrument of war, can sit down and talk, everyone can do it. We are commitment to non-violent struggle. We are going to continue our way, dialogue, under any condition. Now we are around 600 people. All of them ex-fighters. All of them people who was there in that circle and who know what's the meaning of war. And they pay the price. Everyone has different story, but all of us is very similar. Unfortunately, we have been tasted that we are not there, we are not working because we have some sadness in our life. Actually, all our life is sad, but because we are believing what we are doing. My name is uh, Yaniv Reshev. I live um, in a small village where I was born. It is called Nira Kiva. Uh, I was born in 1972. My parents came or immigrated to Israel from Argentina. But not in the other side. Who are they, those people? And uh, they suffer. Because sometimes it might be easier to be just, you know, even if you are totally my enemy, so I know who you are. And I think that today, in many ways, the Palestinians are the Jews of the Jews. They are the people who, well, who are you? Are you Jordanian? Are you, are you Egyptian? Are you Palestinian? I think the Palestinians also, it took them time to understand that they are Palestinians. My village is sitting on an Arab ruined village, like most of the places in Israel. And the Arab name is just what 
want to say his name was Kufha and 300 families live there. It's logically that they are living now in the Gaza Strip in one of the occupation in the, one of the refugees camp and maybe their sons are those that are throwing missiles at, back at us. When I was young I was playing in those fields that were called the Arab village. But this name was natural to me as America, I don't know, <coughs> Europe, every other name. I didn't see any problem with that. It was as if transference to me. And I think this is the main problem of, of people. That language and the way we are taught is much more stronger than the real reality. We can see only the things that we discover. And sometimes the truth is just in front of us, but we can't see it. And it takes a lot of time, and maybe sometimes a life, and sometimes even that is not enough to see things that you couldn't see. Um, my best friend, when, when I was growing up, we were Arabs. I was playing in those fields with them. Uh, Bedouins live in our, near our house, so Walid El Uzayel from the tribe of El Uzayel, which is an important tribe, Bedouin tribe, was my best friend. We had um, workers from the Gaza Street who works, work with us in our field because we work in a field, and they were actually members of the family. My father paid for the for the surgeon to make an, 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 a surgery in, in, in the worker that was kind of mother to all of us, and she died on the table of the surgeon. And he continued to be in touch with her family. So from the other one side, I was brought up in a very uh, strong Zionism. And Zionism means that we believe that the Israeli or the Jewish people must have a country in Israel and from the other side a very humanistic tradition. Not all my friends would work like that. I remember, I didn't remember actually, my mother reminded me before I went to this too. And you must understand I'm, I'm, I'm not a politician, I'm not even an activist in my eyes, I'm just a human being who's working with other people because mainly for me because it's, it's, the situation is very painful and I feel that I must do something with it but most of my life I'm, I'm an editor, I'm an artist this is what I do my mother reminds me um, about when I was 10 years old more like I saw someone uh, beating an Arab worker with a stick now I saw violence towards them before and they were a lot of times written by others like animals, but not to this extent. So she helped me and we wrote a letter to some minister telling him about it. I don't know what happened with it, but my mother said, told me because she was a teacher and she said, you know, if any other of your friends, most of your friends, would come back and tell this story, the mother or the father will say, well, yes, it's